Good evening everybody and I'm back to show you another video of me doing some work. Uh, this time we're not really transcribing, what we're doing here is um, arranging uh, standard notation uh, for tab. So this isn't um, a piece from another instrument, this is something natively from the guitar. Um, for a client of mine that isn't a great reader and would find uh, working on these pieces a lot easier if he had tab for them. Um, and I thought this would be quite an interesting way to see uh, how we can input notes using the, the stave in Guitar Pro and also the pros and cons of doing that versus using the tab. So uh, on the left of my screen as you can see I've got a PDF open with the score um, in place move that over here and then on my right I have uh, Guitar Pro open. So if I was going to start by inputting this um, in Guitar Pro using tab, I put the right key signature, sorry, time signature in and I'd start inputting uh, as normal and then I'm, I'm really having to look at everything and uh, work out the way it's being played which is actually quite slow so I look at that first note and I can see that it's a 16th note G so how is this note being played? Well I'm looking ahead a little bit and I can see that the following note is a D and then an A so I'm making the assumption that these are going to be played um, as open strings which works quite well um, like I say I'm, I'm reading on the left I can see the notes G, D, A, uh, D, G and then uh, a B quite well I'm hesitating I'm not entirely sure I can read um, so that would give me my first bar um, but this is where things get a little bit more difficult. As you can see in the second bar, we have lower voices and upper voices. Now, voices are actually controlled with these buttons down here. You can use up to four voices in Guitar Pro. Um, what we can see is that the voice that's used in the first bar then ties into the second bar in the lower voice. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire part and put it in the second voice. Um, that means when I move into this second bar, um, like so, I can actually have those notes tie across uh, as they're written in the score. I'm just checking, yep, yeah, it's the same, lots of open strings. Uh, so that would be the second voice of that uh, instrument. Now I would go back to my first voice and um, input that voice. So again, I look at the top and I've got my voice, so I've got an E melody note, and that will be played at the 12th fret on the high E string. So I can input that melody um, as so. Now here's where we've got some indications. We can see that this note played on the uh, well, this this two here means it's played on the second string. So this is a B note, second string, um, and my knowledge of the fretboard tells me that that's the 12th fret of the guitar. And then jumping back up like that this note is accented. So this is actually quite a slow process as you can see and I don't really like the way um, let me delete that just so it displays as the second voice only. If you look at the original score what you'll see uh, here is the ability to tie these notes without having them ring like this. So if I wanted to notate this in Guitar Pro and have it sound kind of right. I don't like the way these notes will build up. A better way of doing that might be to delete all of these notes, put the uh, the second bar in uh, ghost notes as I have there, and then indicate that these ring with a, a let ring sign. Gonna help me achieve the same thing. So let me just continue on um, in the next bar, uh, and I'll go back to my first voice. And write it out so uh, we can see the notes. Um, and for some reason, I forgot what the accent uh, hotkey is. So and now I'm struggling to even see where the accent is. Where is accent? There. <laughs> uh, accent is semicolon. So I can put that note in. Um, now, as I say, this is actually quite a slow process. Uh, and that was actually the reason I wanted to do this because uh, I was actually quite interested to see how long a job like this actually takes. This is uh, f there's 15 pages of this to input. Obviously, I'm not working at optimum speeds at this point, 
because I'm talking to you and I'm demonstrating things. Uh, let's just double check. Yeah, an A, a D, a G, and a B. I'm just going to do this last bar on that line for you. And then we'll move over to inputting using uh, notation. And we'll see the, the pitfalls of that, if there are any. And there probably are. So we're back to our back to our E in uh, 12 using my semicolon to put that accent in place just so the uh, the file is as close to the original as I can get it now uh, upon reflection I probably could have used some copy and paste in that bar I don't like how tight that score is there um, so again second voice and I'm going to go down to the bottom input the rest Uh, and then what do it? Uh, zero, yeah. Mm. So that's the the first line of this. Um, I don't have a stop clock going, so I can't see how long that took. But that gives you an idea of how long this takes when I'm putting things in with uh, the standard. Uh, sorry, via the tab. So let's take a look at standard notation um, and see the pitfalls of that. And actually, something's just cropped into my mind, which I'd not considered. We'll see how that affects note input. Um, I don't know how I want this to be beamed. Maybe four and three. I've not really looked ahead. It's only for one bar. It's kind of irrelevant. So if I was going to input things in standard notation, what I need to worry about is voices again. If I want to put in this lower voice, I'll do the same thing. I'll hit my rest button. And I've got an eighth note rest. And now I'm having to put in the notes um, like this. So I'd hit my A. Uh, We've got a G and a B. Again, oh, wrong note. G and a B. Uh, rest. So the same B, G, and the A on the bottom. Now I'd switch over to my first voice. And I'm working from the same, aren't I? Uh, so now this is where things get a little bit trickier. I've not really found a, a more effective way of inputting notes. In the stave like this, see, see, I'm having to correct them. Is there a hotkey for this? Uh, shift plus. Will that work? I've not actually tried that. Shift plus. That does work. Okay, that kind of helps. Um, right now, I'm jumping down to this B, and again, the beaming needs to be sorted out, which isn't ideal. Uh, we'll see the problem with this in a second. What I'm getting at is, uh, as far as doing this sort of thing uh, goes, compared to using a program like Sibelius, this isn't, it's not a perfect solution. So the beaming here is a mess, so I'm needing to beam like that, and beam like that, and I've already, I can already see something that's not displayed correctly. So every single time I do that, I need to indicate that that's a sharp. It's taken me quite a lot of time to do that bar. But let's just move over to the next bar. Hopefully it won't take as long to input this bar, just to give you an idea. And then we'll weigh up some of the pros and cons. So uh, again, we're working from the stave, aren't we? Um, now working in Sibelius, this would definitely be uh, a hair easier because I could just uh, type note names and input those notes. Uh, that's sharp, isn't it? We're really going to start seeing the actual problem with doing this in a second. And actually just the job like this in general, where the problem lies with a job like this. It's not the kind of job that I do often. Uh, I generally, generally sorry, uh, find that people that need this sort of work uh, can read anyway, so you can also see that I can just copy and paste that um, twice. I don't know if that would have <laughs> been any faster. Um, see, maybe this has been a bit faster because I'm. I mean, you could do this without even being able to read music, right? I can just uh, look at the notes and copy where they are 
in terms of the uh, the lines. And actually, interpretation of these scores is uh, an interesting one because we have these slur lines, which I take to mean I'd normally expect that to mean hammer on or pull off, you know, slurred. Um, but here we have these dotted lines, which are obviously different. Um, so the way I'm indicating those uh, is to treat these as slurs and to treat this as true legato, i.e., there shouldn't these dynamically should be smooth. Um, who knows if that's what we really want there? Uh, evidently, I missed out a rest there. So again, I'm just uh, going into input these notes. sign and again like an interesting part of this score you have these tie marks which would indicate that this is tied through the bar um, you know I could either indicate that as such maybe I could put a let ring on it um, the the point is you know this software is never going to it's, it's not a score writing piece of software if that makes sense Right, so the problem with what we've done here is when I look at the, the full score, obviously I've just been inputting from notation, and there's nothing that really indicates how this is being played. The inputting the notation, it's just putting the notes in in a way that it deems sensible. If I really want to interpret this stuff and put a bit more time and effort into it, and this is where things become a bit of a ball ache, um, I, the, I need to look for indications in the music, and there's actually no indications on where that would be fingered. Uh, so that becomes quite, quite an issue. We can tell from the fingerings here that this note would be played with the fourth finger, this note would also be played with the fourth finger, pulled off to the second finger, and then this note would be played with the first finger. So if this note is going to be played with the first finger, it would be, uh, uh, and sorry, the the B note is played with the first finger as well. So we've got the C sharp and the B both played with the first finger. So it it would be fair to assume that these would both be played with on the first finger shifting down on the string. Um, so the fingering for that uh, looks right, and then it stays in position. Um, so it looks actually like I've I've been lucky, and I guess this is. Um, I guess it's quite obvious actually with these chords underneath that are just open strings on the A, D, G and B strings. So uh, yeah, that gives you an idea um, of how I'm inputting notes for something like this, a job like this. It's not a quick job, unfortunately. There has to be some sort of human element involved in doing this. Even if you were to do something like scan this score into Sibelius, um, you're only scanning in the notation and then the tab is going to be automated based on whatever algorithm, whatever system has been programmed. And none of them are human. What you tend to find is uh, you have a scale, a scalar of concept in position one, and then any melodies that go above an open E are all on the high E string, which obviously isn't how we actually play. So yeah, care and attention does need to go into these things. Um, as I say, I don't have a stopwatch open, so I can't see how long that took me, but that was to input two lines of music. It's a very slow process, and not the sort of thing that I'd like to do um, all day, every day. It's kind of uh, relatively mindless work that requires experience, if that makes any sense. Uh, this isn't the sort of thing that you could hand to a piano player that doesn't play guitar and have them do it uh, unfortunately so I get lumbered with it <laughs> but anyway I hope you guys have found that interesting seeing how I do this sort of stuff it's not really the bulk of what I do what I do is obviously transcription rather than um, can't even think of the right way to describe this arranging or it's not really arranging or transposing or anything like that it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd job it's like copy work formatting work if you like <laughs> um, it's certainly not engraving but anyway, yes, I'll stop rambling. It's very late. It's uh, half one in the morning here, and I'm going to crack on and do some more of this stuff and uh, 
I don't know, maybe put something on while I'm doing it. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, probably not, uh, please do hit the subscribe button, like, share with your friends, etc. It really does make a difference. Um, I'm trying to build up subscribers on this channel and put more time, love and care into it for you guys. Uh, if you've enjoyed this content, let me know below. And of course, let me know what other things you'd like to see because uh, I'm here to entertain. So much love, guys. Peace out and I'll see you soon.